Oh, look, pokies are still the main form of gambling that causes harm in the community. Sports betting comes second to that in terms of being a rapidly growing area of that and tied in there is also wagering more broadly with regard to horse racing and then behind that we've probably got the casino game. So across the board, you know, we've got a range of gambling that is causing harm in our communities. Uh, look, it is an activity that, that we're seeing a decreasing number of people engaged with. Um, the issues when people are surveyed about why do they gamble, sometimes it's for escape, sometimes it's they want to have a bit of fun, sometimes it is because, though for other reasons, like they're socially isolated, they think they might get a quick win. So, And some of those things become a concern then, because particularly for those who might think you get a quick win, the gambling, you know, Gambling businesses are working on the basis they're going to make a profit off this. So at the end of the day, the more you gamble, the more you're likely to be behind and the more you're going to contribute to their profits. Uh, look, I think for those who are most vulnerable to harm, it is actually people who are often so socially isolated. There has been research done previously that often people, it's when they've had negative life events, so they may have been through a, a very major relationship breakup or they've had an accident at work and they get a large payout and they're then stuck at home so suddenly they get lured down to the local pokey venue and they put all the payout money into there. So often it is just people, ordinary people who suddenly find something's gone wrong in their life and they end up turning to gambling as a means to try and deal with that and that just results in serious problems for them. Oh, look, at, at the very severe end, you have seen people who have ended up taking their own life as a result of gambling problems. Relationship breakdown is quite high as a, as a result of that, so divorces and other serious relationships failing, people ending up not being able to pay for their housing, so they end up homeless as a result of gambling at the, at the severe end. Very high levels of mental health problems, particularly anxiety and depression, so uh, up to 75% of people who have gambling problem have a problem or being harmed by their gambling also suffer from depression or anxiety as well. So very high rates of uh, interrelation between mental health issues and gambling harm. Look, I, I, um, for online gambling, we, we've seen a sort of saturation uh, of gambling in the past. There has been some reigning in of that, but I think we need to just get rid of it altogether. People who want to make a bet know where to go to gamble. Uh, it is easy to find, so you really don't need these gambling companies pushing their products. Fortunately in Victoria, when it comes to pokies, uh, we've already had uh, pokey venues are not allowed to uh, advertise, other than, though, to people who are already on their loyalty schemes. So we do still see quite some, you know, there is some quite aggressive marketing to people who have signed up onto the loyalty schemes. Uh, look, the internet has been a place where we've seen it growing. Uh, it's one of the people gambling through the internet is one of the fastest forms of, uh, fastest growth of gambling. It's still a relatively small number of people, but it does actually provide an avenue where, uh, particularly for people already being harmed by other forms of gambling, they end up um, not being able to escape gambling. Gambling is then constantly present because you can gamble from anywhere. You don't have to leave your couch to lose your home anymore through online gambling. So it creates a new avenue of greater risk and greater harm. No, look, I think we need more of that in terms of being able to allow, make it easier for people to seek help earlier uh, and, and avoid the stigma of being blamed for what's happened. So that, that's a really important area to, to allow people to not be right at rock bottom before they go and seek help. We need to make it much easier for people to seek intervention earlier. Uh, look, from, from our perspective, we do think there is a need to put more restrictions over the gambling businesses generally and the way they operate. We don't think they've done all that they reasonably can. There is not one measure, though, that's going to fix that. So if we talked about pokies, it would be things like requiring staff to intervene when they can see people being harmed. It is um, reducing the amount you can lose in a single button press from $5 down to one 
which still happens every two and a half seconds. It's reducing the opening hours to give people more breaks between their, their gambling. It's getting rid of the ability to withdraw FPOS cash to gamble inside the venues. And it's giving local communities a lot more control over their gambling. For the online space, we need to see a ban on inducements and other forms of marketing. So the gambling companies need to be stopped from being able to predatorily um, seek to get people to lose as much money as possible by offering them sort of incentives to, to lure them in. Uh, and they also need to be intervening when they can see clear patterns that people are being harmed by their, their gambling early. And then I think across the board we need to see the gambling industry not being able to make donations into political parties to shape the direction that public policy gets set as well.